Okay, let's talk about throttles. In the motorcycle, if you've got your batteries, your motor, and your controller, you're all set to go except that you need that interface between you and the motor controller. And that's going to be the throttle. Now, there's two different ways you can do this. Uh, one is with a twist grip throttle, and the other is with a uh, traditional straight up potentiometer. The way a throttle works on an electric motor configuration is typically it's a resistor or a potentiometer, a resistor which is variable. Uh, so in front of me, what I have here is a Magura twist grip. This is a potentiometer, and then it also has an entire handlebar grip built right into it. So instead of having to reinvent the wheel, you can just buy this as a single component. Uh, these are available through eBay, through um, uh, any uh, electric vehicle mail order places, uh, usually runs around $50. Now you're going to get this and probably the first thing you're going to think is, uh oh, on the back end of this there's three wires. What wires do I use and where do they go? So if I just pull out a motor controller, this is a typical Curtis controller right here. Um, over on this side there are two pins that are for the throttle and I've got three wires. So the trick here is that this is a zero to 5,000 ohm potentiometer or zero to 5K. Typically potentiometers are named just in terms of what their uh, range of resistance is. So to help us figure this out, what we're going to do is we're gonna pull out a multimeter. So here we go, we've got our multimeter that is set to read ohms. It'll read up to 20,000 ohms right now and that's gonna be between these two probes here. Um, most meters uh, vary a little bit. Uh, in the case of this one, it'll give you a one when it's a, a broken circuit that the two probes aren't touching. But if I connect them together, you'll see that that's gonna change to either zero or pretty darn, pretty darn close to it. So on this meter, one means a broken circuit or open circuit. And when you touch the probes, zero means uh, closed circuit or that, that circuit is complete. Um, instead of doing the probes directly, I could also use some jumpers just to make it a little easier here. If I connect this probe to this probe and it's reading zero ohms or no resistance, it's just a, a short circuit, those two are directly connecting, which of course they are, they're connected by this yellow jumper. Now instead of just testing the probes, let's take a look at the throttle wires. I'm going to just connect uh, from the red one, the red probe over to, let's just pick the brown wire on here and leave that there. Um, and we'll connect the black probe to the black wire. At this point, color coding really doesn't mean anything. But uh, when I connect that up, we can see we're getting uh, pretty close to zero ohms between the brown wire and the black wire. Now if I, so that means it's a, it's a no resistance, you know, essentially it's a short. Right now the brown wire and the black wire are connected to each other. But if I take the throttle and I rotate it, look at this number change. It goes up to a little over 5,000 ohms. And if I let go of the twist throttle, because it's spring loaded, just like any motorcycle throttle, it goes back down to zero, or if I twist and hold it at some point in between, I'll get a number somewhere in between. I'll say 2.14 here, or uh, um, a little over 2,000. However, let's say I switch the wires. I'm gonna, instead of the black wire, I'm gonna go to the blue wire. And right away, I'm getting right around 5,000 ohms. And that's with the, the throttle in essentially the off position. Now, if I twist it to what should be full acceleration, instead it goes down to near, nearly zero. So this might seem a little crazy, but what's going on here with these wires is essentially the brown wire is sort of the, the common, and the black one means you're uh, all the way up on signal strength when you twist the throttle, but the blue one starts opposite of that. So this could be a zero to 5K or a 5K to zero. 
So the important thing to remember here is that in this case, we're going to use the brown and the black wires. The blue wire is not gonna do anything at all. So what we'll wanna do is either cut that off or pin it back, tape it up, get it out of the way. And we're just going to use the brown and the black wire for our throttle. Now, if your multimeter doesn't read exactly zero or exactly 5,000 ohms when you're, you're twisting and letting go of the throttle, don't worry too much because most controllers uh, built right in, they've got a little bit of room on either end. They don't start accelerating until you're up a little bit from the bottom of the throttle and they max out before you get to the top. So rest assured that uh, even though quality control isn't super high in terms of the, the very exact range of resistance that these do, it'll work perfectly well with your bike. Now on this controller here, it uses uh, quarter inch spade connections, which is really common. Uh, so what you'll need to do is put some spade connectors onto your wires here. Um, these are pretty skinny wires, so I'm using the, uh, the connectors with the, uh, the red on there indicated that they're for uh, pretty light gauge wires. However, um, the ends of these are not insulated, so what I'll do is I'll take a little bit of uh, some heat shrink to uh, take care of that after I put these on here. Because one thing, on a number of controllers, uh, the top pin is full battery pack voltage. That could be as high as 72 or even 144 volts positive. Um, so anytime you're working around any of these types of connectors, you wanna make sure to keep uh, everything as non-conductive as you possibly can. So I'm going to uh, crimp these onto the brown and the black wires and do a little, uh, little bit of heat shrinking on these. Now I think what I'm gonna do first here is I'm gonna put a uh, piece of heat shrink tubing on just because it's a lot easier to get tubing on before you've got any other kind of connectors on that get in the way. So I'll just slide those through over the blue wire and then all the way down just to, just to make some room. I can trim off the blue wire. We don't need that anymore. And then I'm going to Crimp on the red one. And crimp on the brown one. Now I'm going to need a little bit of a heat shrink tube here. Doesn't have to be very long. So there you go, we have our brown and our black wires sticking out here. Uh, they have spade connectors on there, but those are insulated and the blue wire is uh, trimmed, tucked away and covered with some uh, heat shrink as well. And then on the other side, we've got our twisty throttle. And now all we have to do is install this on the motorcycle. Another thing to keep in mind is even though you have two wires here, uh, polarity does not matter. It doesn't matter which of the two spade connectors that you plug the two wires onto um, in terms of you can't get it backwards because uh, it's resistance. You know, whether the electricity is going this way or this way, it's still the same resistance to make that loop through there. So don't worry about uh, putting that on backwards. Now on the throttle over here, uh, what's really nice about this is it's just got two screws. All we have to do is loosen those up and then it's basically just a clamp. At that point, we can slide this onto the motorcycle handlebar, uh, tighten that down, and the physical throttle itself will be all ready. Then the other end just has to plug into the motor controller. So for the physical installation itself, it's pretty straightforward. Um, I've already removed the hand grip from the motorcycle. And then all I need to do is just loosen these screws just a little bit to loosen that clamp to allow me to slide the throttle on. Um, you do want to watch out kind of the strain and relief part here that there's some room for that. And you don't want to slide the throttle on so far that uh, it actually rubs against the end here and it won't spring back. So I'm just going to pull it out just a little bit holding this, twisting this, make sure everything springs correctly. 
and then tighten down those two screws. Then just give it a couple of test twists, um, make sure that it springs back naturally, and that's it for the handlebar end. So after you've brought the throttle wires down the frame of the cycle, you just need to plug wires, uh, the two wires into pins two and three on the controller. Of course, the controller is not hooked up to power at this time. So there you go pins two and three on the controller. Um, we're heat shrinked around the uh, spade connector so you don't get any shorts and we're ready to go with the throttle. Now the other way you can go for a throttle on an electric motorcycle is to reuse your existing cable driven throttle. But instead of it going down to the engine, you'll put a different type of potentiometer on the end of the cable. In this case, something similar to a Curtis PB6. All you have to do is mount it to the frame of the cycle, somewhere roughly near where the cable went before, and connect the cable up so that when you twist the throttle, it pulls on the potentiometer, and the spring is still there to bring it back as soon as you let go of the throttle. Um, this can be a great way to go. In my case, my throttle was, it was all rusty, the cable was already snapped, so it made more sense to just put a Magura twist grip on in its place but either way can work fine. If you do use something like, like a PB6 potentiometer, uh, just keep in mind it's still the same thing. You've got those two wires coming off there and that's what goes to the motor controller.